Good afternoon, commissioners. Uh, I am Megan Perry Ballinier, Director of Purchasing. Uh, also joining me on the line is Kimberly Reynolds, Fiscal Officer for General Services. Uh, we're happy to be here with you today. Uh, the Purchasing Department is one of three agencies under the Board's General Services Division, alongside Fleet Management and the Office of Diversity, Equity, and Inclusion. Purchasing encompasses three business units, procurement, mail services, and the print shop. 2020 has provided purchasing with opportunities to demonstrate our support for our partner agencies and their vital initiatives, and to grow county partnerships with our local vendors and small, emerging, and small and emerging business enterprises, or SEBEs. Our key activities and accomplishments this year have included the support of cross-agency collaboration in identifying supply channels and securing PPE and other critical items during the COVID-19 pandemic, and the production of ballots and election materials in support of the Board of Elections during the 2020 general election cycle. Commissioners, with your support, we were able to secure new technology in our print shop this fall, which allowed the print team to produce over 557,000 absentee and provisional ballots, which was an 86% increase in print volume from the 2016 uh, general election. Commissioners, in June of 2019, the board adopted a resolution which affected changes to the Board of Commissioners purchasing policy. The primary change was the addition of the inclusion statement seen here, which was intentionally placed at the forefront of the policy. The purchasing department wholeheartedly supports the board's core principle of racial equity as adopted this morning under resolution 793-20 and the board's mission of creating equitable opportunity for Franklin County's local vendors and SEBEs. We continue to evaluate the policy to ensure that statutory requirements are appropriately married with forward thinking procurement strategies that align with Franklin County's values of economic opportunity and diverse supplier engagement. One way that inclusion outcomes are currently being tracked is through the award of POs to SCBEs. In partnership with the county's small and emerging business coordinator, Marlies Wicker, data is collected on what is termed eligible POs. These are newly opened POs that are being awarded to vendors for goods and services, not including encumbrances for existing contracts, utilities, and sole sources, for example. Although the 2020 data on this slide is only representative through October 31st, we are indeed seeing an upward trend in the percentage of eligible POs awarded to SCBEs in terms of both volume and dollar value. And while I have this slide up, I will step uh, aside uh, so Marlise Wicker can appropriately uh, in a socially distant manner, uh, provide a couple of comments here as well. Thank you. Good afternoon, commissioners. Marlies Wicker, your small and emerging business coordinator. Driving economic activity is one of my top priorities as a small and emerging business coordinator. And the best way to achieve this is through growing our small and local businesses. This can be achieved by making good faith effort by encouraging Franklin County agencies to utilize small and emerging business enterprise suppliers in all phases of procurement and contracting, which includes formal competitive bidding, multiple quote process, and purchase orders. I will now turn it over to Director Perry Ballinier. Commissioners, looking ahead to 2021, purchasing has adopted a new performance spotlight that will measure the percentage of dollar value of eligible purchase orders awarded to SCBEs. This measure will illustrate and help us to analyze the engagement efforts and outcomes of the county's SEBE partnerships. Our aspirational goal is for 90% or more of the eligible PO dollar values to be awarded to SEBEs in 2021. Purchasing is committed to assisting agency partners in sourcing from SEBE supply chains 
whenever possible. We are committed to ongoing communication with the SCBE community to identify, understand, and address barriers that may exist in our current competitive and non-competitive procurement processes, documents, and requirements. And Purchasing is committed to a partnership with the County's Office of Equity and Inclusion, whose ideas and initiatives will undoubtedly elevate our collective mission of equitable opportunity for all. Thank you, Commissioners and County Administration for your leadership in these efforts. I'd also like to thank the entire Purchasing team for their dedication and hard work. And now I will turn this over to uh, Ms. Kina Smith and Ms. Marley Slicker. Thank you, Director Perry Ballinier, and good afternoon, President Commissioner O'Grady, Commissioner Boyce, and Commissioner Brown, Chief Economic Equity and Inclusion Officer Kina Smith, and I am joined by um, Ms. Marley Wicker, our Small and Emerging Business Coordinator. We are all aware of the threat that COVID-19 poses to our economy. And the impact of this destabilization is greatest in black and brown communities. When national experts reported dire predictions that more than 41% of minority businesses may not survive the pandemic, you, mobili you mobilized immediately with several COVID assistance and recovery initiatives for small minority and women owned businesses. One of these initiatives, the Franklin County Business Growth and Equity Alliance was formed specifically as an acknowledgement of your awareness of the compounded toll systemic racism and COVID-19 was taking on minority historically underutilized business owners. The Equity Alliance is a new economic development partnership formed with Columbus Urban League and One Columbus to break down barriers and remove obstacles that support market-based disparities such as inequitable capital access and that further entrench our county's racial wealth gap. Our 2020 goal was to help these vulnerable businesses beat the odds and survive the pandemic by improving liquidity through the provision of CARES Act dollars funded, CARES Act dollars funded, funded grants from the equity fund and stand up a new community development financing institution to increase capital options for traditionally marginalized communities and residents. Thus far, 105 businesses received $1.6 million from the equity fund. Another initiative is Forward Cities. Forward Cities is our program that provides direct capacity building support to entrepreneurs of color and seeks to strengthen the entrepreneurial ecosystem to anchor their growth. We're in the final contract um, of this initiative. And this year, the program supported 15 small minority owned businesses to explore their ability to scale. The Side Hustle Academy supported solopreneurs who have other full-time employment and indicated a desire to become full-time CEOs. This is a common occurrence among uh, entrepreneurs of color. And this was supported along with the innovation retail sprints, which are employer businesses with brick and mortar locations. Unfortunately, COVID interrupted the implementation of the program However, the business owners did manage to finish the technical assistance portion of the program and of the cohorts, and we awarded them with a total of $35,000. We had additional forward city activities, and that included conduct, conducting an entrepreneurial support organization, regional assessment for capacity and connectivity to understand the needs of ESOs and system gaps. And understand how we can support them in the future as they support our entrepreneurs. And we recently conducted an entrepreneurial racial equity training. This training raised awareness about the, his, the history of racial inequities in our market-based economy and highlighted how we might begin to create a more inclusive economy. And lastly, and most recently, 
we launched the Office of Diversity, Equity, and Inclusion, where we work at the intersection of racial equity and economic inclusion to create a more inclusive economy, increase economic mobility, and close the racial wealth gap. This work will be aligned with the Rise Together Blueprint for Poverty Reduction, as well as supporting the missions of purchasing, as well as economic development and planning. I will talk a bit more about the new office's goals for 2021 a little further into the presentation, but for now, we'll turn it over to Marlies to share 2020 accomplishments of the Small and Emerging Business Enterprise Program. Marlies. Thank you, Kate. Under the guise of the COVID-19 we quickly sourced small and emerging businesses to help with our needs of the PPE equipment. Four minority business enterprises and one small and emerging business enterprise supplied to the county cleaning supplies, masks, gloves, hand, hand sanitizers. And just to note, four out of the five companies made a pivot for what they were doing in their regular day to day to supply this, these resources to us, just over $119,000. In 2020, resources and outreach event for my position. I created a small business toolkit, which was created for small businesses on our website to assist them navigate the many resources of funding through our economic development and planning to our community partners, partners such as Rev1, ECDI, Columbus Urban League, and the Workforce Development Board. These resources help small businesses complete the PPP loan application and also grant that they could receive. The toolkit also provided information and resources with Job and Family Services, our Office of Aging and Public Health, as well as human resources. We held small business listening sessions, which included um, neighborhood was one in June, um, we held another with women, and the other was the local supply chain business owner. A total of 130 participants we heard from, from our small and minority business owners on their experiences during the pandemic shutdown and how the county can help them get back on their feet. We also heard through the listening sessions from an economist with a forecast of what is to be expected in the coming months. Coming month. During July, we launched a DBE sur survey that was sent to 455 small and emerging businesses. 72 responded and completed the survey with a 15% response rate. There were 11 questions asked, including demographics of ethnicity, zip code. We also asked the small businesses their primary line of business and if they were remain closed or open during this pandemic. A short summary, summary of the results were, uh, a small percentage of the businesses closed during COVID-19. Most businesses were in the goods and services and a higher percent of the businesses were white business owners um, who received the full amount of the PPP loan. Mostly all demographics used a bank versus a credit union or community bank to complete their loan process. And over half noted that there were little obstacles in completing the loan application. Over 50% of the businesses um, never received a better quote or RFP from the county, which was also a question on the survey. Um, the impact of COVID response ranged from zero to no revenue with projects that they already had scheduled being canceled or put on a temporary hold. Most of the response where they allowed their employees to work from home during this. Another outreach event we held virtually was our coffee and conversation. In May, we partnered with our Minority Business Assistance Center. At that time, we knew that our business, our county offices were closed to the public except for the court activity, but county was open for business. We wanted to hear from our small businesses. So, 
we created or we set up a virtual coffee and conversation. Due to the COVID-19 meeting in person was not feasible. Nonetheless, we recognize the benefit of competing for opportunities to, to do business with Franklin County. Therefore, we invited small businesses to this virtual event from their home or office with a coffee or tea of their choice. We welcome questions during our chat, during the Zoom. We're also planning our end of the year coffee and conversation in December, which we will focus on the procurement process and completing an RFP, ITB, or quote with the county. The next bullet is our construction inclusion team. Continue to meet during the COVID uh, pandemic in June, July, June, August, and October to track and measure and monitor the Franklin County Correction Center. Efforts of outreach for the second phase of the Correction Senior Center were held with two virtual events with approximately 50 participants. We continue to monitor the workforce goal, aspirational goal, which is 50% of employees must be local residents and 20% of the 50 must be low, low income. And these are residents in the city of Columbus and Franklin County. Currently, our workforce goal for low income is 42% and our local is 35. We have an aspirational goal on the contractor side, which is a 12% aspirational goal. Currently, the goal is 24%. As the project continues, I'm sure the goals will increase. And last but not least, our new office will hold our first virtual conference. The conference will be held on December the 10th. And our title for our conference is The Next, Expanding Minority Entrepreneurship and Economic Equality. Just a few bullet points of our conference. We will examine what the next opportunities will be for black and brown business owners and entrepreneurs. How COVID will impact government spending, buying and contracting for minorities, small and women business owners. And how the county agency budget and procurement practices will reflect the commissioner's new core value of equity, racial equity. Tina will continue with the next slide. Thank you. Thank you, Marlise. For our 2021 goals in the economic equity and inclusion work stream of our new office, um, which of course we are underway with our planning as we speak, um, we will continue to support Black and minority-owned businesses through the pandemic with opportunities for funding, policy development, and advocacy. We will operationalize the new CDFI and the new Equity Al Alliance partnership with Columbus Urban League, One Columbus, and additional partners in 2021. We will support economic development and planning and increasing equity and inclusion in development initiatives. And we plan to extend collaborations with diverse community partners such as the YWCA, MORPC, and all county agencies to amplify regional efforts to dismantle structural racism and close the racial wealth gap. Marlise will close our portion of the presentation by sharing 2021 goal highlights from the small and emerging business support program work stream. Thank you commissioners and thank you for your leadership in this area. Marlise. To develop and implement the aspirational goals for all board of commissioner agencies. The quarterly reports that we receive from our commissioner agencies will continue. The efforts for the construction inclusion team as we go forth with phase two of the project. And outreach accorded will be done quarterly with new media activities reaching out to other partners within Franklin County. Thank you very much for your time. You look happy that this is over. <laughs> you don't know. <laughs> yeah, that look, yeah, that look like I'm so glad it's over. Yeah. <laughs> thank you, Commissioners. Are we happy to take any questions? Um, thank you. Um I I don't know. I can't see the full screen of everybody. I was I had on the speaker screen to make sure. 
I don't know if Commissioner Brown want to go first or, or Grady. I'm just go checking ahead. if anybody has any questions. Go ahead, Kevin. Okay. Um, you, I don't know if you all were on the call earlier to listen to the discussion with regards to the budget for some of the work, but you, you outline a, a very good, I think, uh, plan for the year in terms of what you all want to accomplish. But, but I'm curious as to how you're going to carry a lot of that out with, um, um, a with no budget. Um, do you already have that sort of budgeted in? I mean, you already have that factored in. So commissioner, we have some of it already factored in. Um, the county administrator, um, as well as OMB, um, have been um, generous enough to allow us for um, to make some plans and to share those plans with you, get your approval, um, and then be able to understand a little bit more about um, what resources will be made available to us. And of course, we will adjust um, and operate what, within, within, within what we are given. Um, we're also hopeful that there will be additional CARES Act dollars um, that Congress will allocate um, that will be helpful in helping us to support um, small and emerging business as this uh, pandemic um, continues and for the duration of that time. I, I, two things. One, um, again, I, I would not uh, plan on additional CARES Act dollars. It's just, I think that we should, we should plan as though we're not getting anything. And if we do get it, then you know we'll, we'll respond accordingly. Um, I'm sorry. Yeah. Let's see, let me see you say something. Just absolutely agree. Uh, okay. Yeah. And and then the second thing is, uh, um, you know, um, I I would challenge you all to think of your work because your your work is going to be very important to what you know the declaration that we did to this morning. And, and some of the work that we we're doing connected to the um, uh, blueprint. Um, but I would challenge you to think of your programmatic work, which, which all seems like you all have thought it out a little bit, but I want you to think of it in terms of 2022. You know, how are we gonna look back at 2021 and make more of the case to do more of this work? And I, I wanna see, I think data is important. You know, I was sharing earlier that I keep getting all these sort of mean, you know, inboxes and emails and different things, you know, you know, what are y'all doing? And, it, and it's important that we are constantly um, showing the public the data and the information that we have and we're collecting. And so, um, so I, I, I think you all do a pretty good job of that. Um, but, I, but for 2020, think of it again in 2022, when we're looking back at 2021, in your first year of a full office kind of establishment, how we want to tell the story, given the resolution that we we talked about today, and so I think I don't want this budget process to go to con conclude without us having really sort of all put our hands on it and said this is what we want to see. And so I know you heard Commissioner Grady earlier said he wants to see a plan, you know, and it sounds like you've got a real thoughtful layout there that, that I, I will acknowledge that so you did a good job but but there should be budget items connected to that in my opinion we should we should be able to tie the goal and the work to resources that we're dedicating and then we should see exponential results from that and so um uh again i think you're on you're, you're on something but i the, based on the conversation earlier we really want a robust plan and effort and strategy. And I'm not, again, you, you just did a very good job with what I like what I see, but I want you to have the resources to carry out this work in a way that A, gives us the data to make the bigger case and do more work and B, help the public understand just how vested Franklin County is in this work. And I think corporations and other entities will follow suit when we can show that kind of investment and alignment. So I'm, I'm really counting, I'm counting on the office of your, your office here to, to, for big things. Thank you, sure. sir. Um, appreciate that. And um, we are um, um, 
planning uh, for the future. I appreciate the forward look, um, especially to 2022. One of the things that we're doing right now is um, uh, doing what I call a listening tour. And so we're having conversations with um, um, our colleagues and um, the other departments, as well as external stakeholders to understand um, where we can be supportive, um, where we can be uh, more aggressive um, and just where the gaps are um, in the work that we've been called to do. So I think once we complete um, those conversations, we'll have a better idea of exactly what um, kind of resources um, we would be um, needing for 2021, 2022. Okay. You know, I Thanks. think that makes sense. And not having had this position before here at Franklin County, I think it makes a lot of sense to figure out what the needs and gaps are in this arena before you go out and just do a lot. Yes, ma'am. Um, I think that, you know, as I look at supporting economic development, for instance, because you put that down, I think it would be a mistake to do a parallel economic development effort. And I think going and working with Jim to see if there are gaps in what he's doing that you could help out with makes more sense rather than doing a parallel track and running two economic development mm -hmm. efforts. That doesn't make sense. So I think, I think listening and talking to our agencies and then to others outside makes more sense before you develop fully your plan of action. So I appreciate that you're doing that. And Marlise, I know you've been doing such a great job in what you're doing. I hear comments a lot on what you've been doing for the businesses in the community, our vendors, and that makes a great deal of sense to combine with what Keen is doing. Um, I think that could be a way to go. And, and I think that's the start of a new effort that we're doing. And, and I like the two of you working together in a way that we've not had before. And we can do some really big things in this arena of racial equity and do it well. We could make a real big dent in getting pe people into jobs and entrepreneurship working with the county in ways that they've never had the opportunity to do so before, I think would be a win for everybody. So thank you. Thank you, Commissioner.